Believing in healing is different than believing for healing. And we're going to talk about that next. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled Receiving Divine Healing. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're doing a series called Receiving Divine Healing, and we've primarily focused on receiving healing by faith. And you may ask, is there any other way to receive healing? And, and there is. You could receive healing through gifts of the Spirit or working of miracles, but that is not guaranteed. Those things happen as the Spirit wills. But every time someone came to Jesus to receive their healing by faith, they received 100% of the time. And so we want to focus on that. We've talked about the importance of that. And we do have study notes, extensive study notes. You can get these on our website. You can download them. We've also included, as well as all of the teaching in these 20 episodes of the program, we've included all healing scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the ones that I like uh, that, uh, that apply to healing. And we've also included the instances in the New Testament where individuals receive their healing by faith. And this was designed to build your faith, to allow you to study and feed on these things uh, over and over again. It's very convenient and it's, it's, it's orderly. If you watch these programs, you're going to understand the flow and the points that we make in the outline. And then you can go back and review that, feed on it, and allow these things to become real. Allow it to become part of your consciousness. And if you'd like to uh, have access to all 20 episodes, we have this in our free download section. You can stream the videos. Right now, you can get all of the videos if you'd like. Uh, uh, on, on our website in the free download section, Receiving Divine Healing, or you can download the audio. That's already available, even though um, most of these episodes have not aired. You can go ahead and, and get that if you'd like and, and, uh, and get ahead on the teaching. We're going to go back to Luke 13, and I made this point in the last program, and I want to make it again, and then we'll go on. The woman with the uh, spirit of infirmity, she was a Jewish woman. Jesus went to the synagogue and he, he healed this woman. Now, it doesn't say that she was healed by her faith. In fact, it uh, doesn't say anything about that. But the statement Jesus made concerning her healing should encourage us all. Uh, when she was healed, the, uh, I'm going to start here in verse 14. This is Luke 13, verse 14. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. That was kind of a hypocritical statement. It's like, it's like you know, everybody can heal, but why would anybody do it on the Sabbath? Well, they weren't getting anyone healed. And Jesus was the only one that was healing people. And then his disciples uh, were anointed and commissioned. But it's not like this was a regular occurrence. And the fact that he was angry that someone got healed on the Sabbath day shows you where his heart was. It certainly wasn't with the people. And so uh, the Lord answered, and, and what he said, I believe, is very helpful to us today. Uh, those of us who want to believe and receive healing, he said in Luke 13, 15, the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it away to water? Then in verse 16, So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And we talked about deductive reasoning and how science uses deductive reasoning to come to uh, to conclusions. And uh, if the premise is true, then the conclusion is true. And the premise is this, and you can see this in this verse, that the children of Abraham ought to be loosed from their infirmities. And if you read the blessings of Abraham, the promises to Abraham, it included divine healing. It included healing of, of their bodies. In fact, the curse of the law was, was every sickness and every disease under heaven. And so 
the, the premise here is the children of Abraham ought to be loosed from their infirmities. This woman was a daughter of Abraham, so she ought to be loosed from her infirmity. And thank God today we can read in Galatians where it says, If you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, if this woman, according to Jesus, should be loosed from her infirmity because she's a daughter of Abraham, you ought to be loosed from your infirmity. And you could say it this way. The, the descendants of Abraham have been free from the curse or free from infirmities. You're a descendant of Abraham through Jesus Christ. You ought to be loosed from your infirmity. Actually, Galatians 3.13 should settle the issue once and for all. And, it, and it's simply this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, everyone uh, uh, curses everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. You are uh, the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham are loosed from their infirmities. You ought to be loosed. And we wanted to make that point because we want to, we're doing this gradually, step by step. And, and uh, we want to convince people that if you're sick today, if you're dealing with infirmities, sickness and disease in your body, you ought to be loosed. Let's get to that place at least where we don't accept it as God's will or just what you have to deal with or just things that you have to go through to live on this planet. No, if you're dealing with sickness and disease, you ought to be loosed. There's no condemnation in that statement. It's a statement that's that's really in, intended to bring hope it's to it's to give you something to believe for something to believe in you don't have to stay uh, bound by sickness and disease you ought to be loosed and man when you get to that point then you're ready to go forward but but as long as we're doubting the fact that maybe God doesn't want to heal us maybe we're supposed to have this maybe there's nothing we can do about it or uh, even worse, we've already prayed and nothing happened. I've had hands laid on me and I didn't get better. And so we begin to think that maybe we ought to have this. Let me just make it clear. You ought to be delivered. You ought to be delivered. We ought to be delivered from infirmity, sickness, and disease. And we want to help you get to that place, but we have to take it one step at a time. And as I've said before, and we're going to say this over and over again in this teaching, one of the problems that I see is that people rush through this process too quickly. They're, they're ready to pray, they're ready to receive, but they're not ready to believe they receive when they pray. They're not ready to stand in faith or fight the fight of faith. And that could be uh, part of what you're going to have to do uh, to receive your healing. You may have to stand in faith. You may have to fight the good fight of faith. And we're going to explain that and how to do that. But first, I wanted to make, make it clear that we ought to be delivered. If we are Christ's, then we are Abraham's seed. And, and I'll give you that verse. That's Galatians 3.29. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means if that woman ought to be delivered, you ought to be delivered. Jesus said she ought to be delivered because she's a descendant of Abraham and because of the promises that God made to Abraham. Well, we, we fill in the, the blanks here and connect the dots and come to the New Testament, the New Covenant, and if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the same thing Jesus said about her applies to you. You ought to be free from your infirmity. Now, I want to make this statement. I made it at the top of the, of the program, and, and I think it's important to make this clear to people who want to receive from God, and that is simply this. Believing in healing is different than believing for healing. Most of us, especially if you watch this program, we believe in healing, and we've heard teaching on healing from time to time for years. We don't object to it. We don't have a problem with it. We don't believe all of the arguments against divine healing. And if I ask you, do you believe in divine healing? You would say yes. And do you believe that healing is the will of God? Most of us would say yes. 
Do you believe that God heals people today? Most all of us would say yes. But that is different than believing for healing in your life. It's the difference between seeing a promise and embracing a promise. And that, those are two entirely different things. And, and one of the problems with this is, is this, is that people believe in healing and they may not believe for healing for many years. Maybe they just aren't sick or maybe they're, they have minor things that, that they can, they can uh, treat with medicine or medical science or maybe they just go through it and get well. You know, your body is always fighting to be healed and to heal itself. And so uh, uh, in, in some cases, people haven't believed for healing. They've only believed in healing. And so it's an entirely different thing to embrace it. It, it, it would be the difference in believing in exercise and actually exercising. And, and, you know, I can sit and talk all day long about the benefits of exercise. I believe in it. You know, I went through a really difficult period of time in my life where I was very exhausted. I was completely burned out as far as strength and natural energy. And one of the greatest uh, things that, that I did in the natural, other than believing God and walking in, you know, in faith, was exercise. Exercise really did more for me than any kind of supplement or any other thing. Uh, diet or anything else that I that I did and I could tell you how beneficial it is and what I what happens when you exercise and all that but that's not the same as going to the gym and exercising it's just not the same so uh, I it's so important to make this distinction because uh, we can see it in this area of exercise but a lot of times we don't see it in the area of healing uh, you can go to a divine healing church. You can listen to a divine healing ministry uh, and yet not believe for healing for yourself. And what happens is you're not exercising those muscles. You're not really building your faith in that area, even though you don't have a problem with it. And if somebody preached on healing, you would be all in. You'd believe every word of it. You'd take notes. You'd say amen. And, and, and you would embrace that concept but it's different than taking it for yourself, believing it for yourself. And when you have a, <laughs> here's, the, here's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, my gym has a lot of machines, weight machines. It has cardio machines. And, and the difference between believing in exercise and actually exercising is you go into the gym, you get on one of those machines and you do the work. And I have tried, you know, there's all kinds of trainers wanting to sell their time and uh, want to, uh, you know, and I've, I tell them this and they leave me alone. I say, until you can find a way for me to pay you and you do my exercises for me and I get all the benefits, I don't need your help right now because nothing is going to stop me uh, to, to substitute for me doing this work myself. I've got to get on that machine. I got to sweat. And, uh, and thank God, you know, it is worth it. Uh, <laughs> so I, I like to say this, all this, it's not a trainer. I don't need special diets and special trainers. I did all this myself. Now, I might be 15 pounds overweight and a little flabby in the wrong, wrong places, but this is all me. <laughs> I did not have professional help to get to this point. Maybe it's time that I got a trainer, I don't know. But like I said, you can have all the trainers in the world, but they're going to eventually make you do the work. And until you do the work, you're not going to benefit from it personally. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Don't wait until you've got some fatal illness or, or some huge physical problem, uh, incurable disease to, to do this. Let's begin to believe for healing right where we are. Believe God for the little things, whereas maybe you were, uh, you know, taking a pill or, or, or going to see a doctor or getting a shot for something. Uh, try to believe God. Decide, I'm going to believe God first, not last. And, and, and that's one of the signs that somebody has believed in healing but not for healing is that they don't really pray and believe God until they've tried every medical, uh, you know, solution possible and when that doesn't work then they go pray 
uh, let's pray first. Let's believe God first. Let's, let, let's, let's invite God in. Get an appointment with God um, before you get an appointment with the doctor. And I'm not against doctors, don't get me wrong, but, but what happens is many times we weaken our faith because we put our confidence in medical science first and God second. So we, we need to flip that around because um, it's, it's just very important to, to begin to flex those muscles, exercise those muscles, and believe God for healing. Uh, not just say that you do, but to actually believe Him for healing. And, you know, I'm going to tell this story, and it's not my story, but one of the greatest advocates to divine healing that I know in our lifetime is Andrew Womack. And Andrew's told this story, so I'm not telling anything uh, that he hadn't told in public. But, but uh, when, when he and Jamie were just starting in ministry, they were very poor, and he had a job. He was working uh, a full-time job, and they needed the money. And he came in from work, and he was sick. And uh, he, he was just, I mean, I think he came in for lunch and had a, a, a break, and then he went back and came back, and he was just sick. And, and, uh, and so uh, instead of laying in bed and and calling for the doctor, he said he got up and, and spent all night believing God, standing on the Word of God. And he said he was so sick he couldn't talk. And, and he was crawling. And get this picture. He was crawling around on the floor, pushing the Bible to stay awake, pushing the Bible across the floor with his nose and, and just with everything within him, believing the Word of God. And you might think, well, that's just radical. And it is. And you might think, I've never heard of anybody doing anything like that before. And I know, I, I agree. But he's been walking in health and wholeness, never been to a doctor in all these years, probably 50 years. That's quite a testimony. Well, he was believing for healing instead of just believing in healing. And, and because of that, he began to trust God for his physical symptoms early on, and he just never stopped. And now, I mean, they're amazing. That He doesn't wear glasses, and his Bible print is so small, and yet he believes God, he trusts God. And, and I mean, he's just really believing God in, in, in the area of, of health, and he's healthy. And so, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You know, you, you might think, well, that's just radical. I'm just not going to do that, and that's fine. That's your choice. And, and certainly God's not opposed to people going to the doctor, but, but if we're going to walk in health and healing, we've got to believe for healing and make that a priority in our lives. And, uh, and you do that by faith, and you do it by you know, embracing the promises for yourself. So it's not just for the daughter of Abraham. It's not just for the woman bent over with a spirit of infirmity. It's not just for her, it's for all the seed of Abraham. I'm the seed of Abraham, therefore I ought not be sick. So what are we going to do about that? Well, let's stand on the Word. Let's, let's determine that we're going to get what belongs to us. We're going to have what we ought to have. And we're not going to have what we ought not have. And healing is, is something that belongs to the seed of Abraham. It belongs to those who are Christ's. It belongs to you in Jesus' name. And the fact is, and again, I'm not opposed to doctors. I'm not opposed to medical science. But when you go to the doctor, he's not going to demand that you get your rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. He's going to look to medical science and his education and what you know drugs and s surgery can do for you. He's not going to demand that you get your rights and pri privileges in Christ. Uh, that's something you have to do for yourself. Now, I want to make this point, and we're going to move on in this teaching. But those who believed the Lord Jesus for their healing came to Jesus. They didn't wait for Him to come to them. And this is another problem that we see in this area of healing, is people are waiting for God to do something. And the truth is God's waiting for us to do something. He's already done something. He's already provided healing just like He's already provided salvation. It would be wrong for you to tell a lost person uh, that all you got to do is wait for God to save you. And one of these days, somewhere, 
sometime God is going to save you. That's really not the right instructions to give a, an unsaved person. You tell them, believe on Jesus, and He'll forgive you of your sins. Accept Jesus as Lord. In other words, you're not waiting on God for salvation. God is waiting on you for salvation. And He will save you, but you have to make the next move. And that's true with healing. So you see, when people receive healing by faith, not through the working of miracles or gifts of healings, when those things happen, Jesus would come to them or God would come upon them and heal them and it would be miraculous and it would be unexpected and, uh, and sudden. But when, when people received by faith, they came to Jesus. And uh, I'll give you a couple of examples here uh, because you can do this. You, you, you can do this for yourself and that's the underlying message in this uh, teaching of receiving healing by faith, that is what we see in the New Testament. We didn't get all these examples of people coming to Jesus and being healed by their faith in Him to, to just rejoice for them. These things were written for our benefit. They were, he's giving us examples that work. You know, I heard, a, I heard a preacher on the radio say something to this effect that some of, you, some of these preachers on the radio are trying to convince people that they can win in life. And I thought, and that was supposed to be a criticism. And I thought, well, we, we don't need people to help us lose. That's not, that's not hard at all. We can do that without even trying. Why not get on the radio and teach people how to win, how to overcome? And, and so uh, if you want to receive healing, follow people who received healing. Follow those that got it, those that overcame. And the Bible gives us example after example. And we're going to go through each one of them in this, in this series to build your faith in this. That, that there is a way to receive from God no matter who you are. And, and I mean, these were men and women. They were at different uh, social uh, levels. They were all different kinds of people received from God by faith their healing. And you can do the same thing. So the first two I want to look at are mentioned together in Mark chapter 5. And um, let's just go to verse 22. Mark chapter 5, verse 22. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came. Notice, he came. He didn't wait for Jesus to come to him. And, and that's the attitude that gets nothing from God. Well, God knows where I am. God knows what I need. And if, if God wants to give it to me, He will. And people even go to church with that attitude. Well, I'm here. I'm in the house of God. I'm faithful. I give. And, and so if the Lord wants to do anything, He can certainly do it. Uh, that's not how you receive. That's not how you got saved. He came to Jesus for a specific reason. He, uh, Jairus by name, when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him. And that's another point that I want to make, is that anytime someone came to Jesus by faith, they had his, his t attention. He never said, Look, I'm busy. I've got to go meet with the some important person right now. If you'll just wait, I'll be back. Never did he do that. When anyone came to Jesus in faith, he recognized them, he gave them his full attention, and they left having their need met. No one left empty-handed when they came in faith. And the, and the same principles are true today. All we need to do is, is, is look at these individuals, study what they did, and do that in our own lives, and we can have the same results. Say, are you sure? It's the Bible. The Bible is not a history book. It's not just written so we can look and see what Jesus did. It's written to show us how to live our lives today. These faith examples still work. You know, faith's never been done away with. People say, well, you know, healing's been done away with. The gifts of the Spirit have been done away with. Miracles have been done away Well, faith hasn't been done away with. By grace, are you saved through faith? People still believe today, 
And if, if Jairus received his miracle by faith and the woman with the issue of blood who's right here in the same chapter received her miracle by faith, then faith has not been done away with. And faith will work today like it worked then. And if that's true, and it is, then we can receive just like they received. And that's really the point that we're making here. So I'm going to have to conclude today's teaching. I want to encourage you to get the study notes. All these examples are in here. And in fact, we're going to go through a few of them, and then we're going to come back and do each example uh, one by one where individuals received their healing by faith in Jesus. I have a bundle this is on a USB drive. Here's one right here. This is a USB drive you plug into your computer. And if you don't know how that works, you plug that into your computer. You can plug it into your car. You can plug it into your smart TV. And we put on this USB drive, we've put all these teachings, all 20 episodes of receiving divine healing. I've also put five episodes of objections that people have to divine healing and these things are in video and audio so you can listen to it in your car you can watch it on your device on your TV or your or your uh, computer and then we've also put the study notes in here with all the examples and all the healing scriptures so that's all together in this one bundle and it's a, for a gift of thirty dollars we'll mail this to you and you can have this and listen to it over and over again it's like a, a home Bible study on a USB drive. It's, a, it's amazing what we can do now um, with technology. And I want to encourage you to use the technology for your benefit. Well, uh, in addition to that, please pray about being a partner. I really need some of you, especially those of you in the Florida, Tampa area that are watching this on CTN, I need a hundred new partners to join with me from that area. I know, um, you know, broadcast television is free to you, but it's not free to me. I'm paying a lot of money to put this on uh, in that area, and I would love to uh, encourage you to partner with us. If, if, if 100 people in that area would become a partner, or in any area, would become a partner right now uh, and support us from anywhere from $25 to $100, we average it out at $50 a month, that would be an extra 5000 a month. And with that increase, we could pay those bills and uh, be set to be on in Florida long term. And that's my desire. That's my goal. I don't want to go off of any channel. I want to go on more channels. And so uh, I ask you to pray about that and support us. If you are a supporter, let me say thank you. You're making it possible for us to reach more people than we've ever reached before. We're on more platforms than we've ever been. We're getting uh, emails and letters all the time from people that are being helped by this program. And we don't really have an agenda, as you've seen. I don't have a political agenda. I just want to get people, uh, help people overcome and do the will of God in their lives and enjoy the best that God has for them. Uh, that's really our agenda, to take all this teaching and get it out to the public. Call our helpline. We can set you up on automatic giving. We'd love to hear from you today. Uh, thank you for being a, a viewer and part of our Good News audience. We're going to close for today. Until next time, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter.